Hi, how are you? Welcome to Joyce Tech. In this video, we'll solve together the problem of finding maximum sum from an array of integers such that no two integers are adjacent. A good and an interesting problem this is that can be asked in your next developer interview. Therefore, I want you to watch this video till the end. We'll solve it using the dynamic programming technique and you will see how easily we get to the solution of this interesting TP problem. So stay tuned to this video. Now let's check the problem statement. When it comes to a subsequence, then obviously there will be an array of integers from which this subsequence is taken. So you are given an array of integers in the first place in this problem. You need to find out the maximum sum of a subsequence from this array. On what basis but you are going to find the subsequence? There has to be a condition, right? Yes, there is one. The condition says that no two integers in the subsequence should be adjacent in the array. This makes the final ask as find the maximum sum of a subsequence such that no two numbers in the subsequence is adjacent in the array. Here in our array, which has integers 5, 6, 10, 100, 10 and 7, the subsequence that satisfies the condition and also provides us the maximum sum will be 607. Note, no two integers from this subsequence are adjacent in the array. The sum will come out as 113, which is our answer. We'll construct a dynamic programming algorithm around this problem in our framework. But before we switch to our framework, I urge you to subscribe to my channel, Joey Stick, and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos of dynamic programming, which I make in the future. Let's move to the framework now. You can see that up here is the problem array and beneath it is the solution array. We'll fill this array and in the end, we'll get the correct answer. What we need to keep in mind is that we don't have to add two integers which are adjacent to each other. Now we'll start with our first sub problem which represents our base state 2. By default, the value will be 5, the first integer from the problem array and I'm going to populate it straight away. We move to the second cell now. Let me consider this sub problem which involves 5 and 6. It is obvious that we can't add 6 to 5 because of the condition involved. Now when I have to find the maximum sum with my sub problem containing only 5 and 6 and I can't add 5 and 6 together, so what will be the maximum value? It will be the lonely integer 6. So a comparison will happen between 5 and 6 and we'll choose the maximum value. Thus, I populate 6 in this cell. Now let's move to the third subproblem that involves 5, 6 and 10. The second cell in this solution array contains the optimized solution of the subproblem involving 5 and 6. Remember, this is the maximum sum of a subsequence obtainable till here. But can this 6 be added to the new integer 10? No, because adjacent integers addition is not allowed. Even though the solution in the immediately previous cell of the solution array might not have used the immediately previous integer. But in our case, the subproblem contains the immediately previous integer, which is 6. And this is the logic behind not adding the value in the immediately previous cell of the solution array to the new integer. So 10 cannot be added to 6. But 10 can be added to the optimized solution stored in this cell, which represents our first subproblem. Because no way it is going to hold result involving any immediately previous integer to 10. So once I add 10 to 5, I get 15, which I populate here for a while. Now this is one of the candidate for this cell, because I have another candidate stored in this immediately previous cell of the solution array. I need to choose the maximum. So what is the maximum between 15 and 6? 15 obviously. So I populate 15 in this cell. Observe the first three integers of the problem array and find out the maximum sum yourself. It will come out as 15 which is what this algo just derived. Now based on this technique, let's fill the other cells quickly. Okay, so now my sub problem becomes this. 
it involves 100. 100 is the new integer. Now, based on the technique that we just discussed, 100 cannot be added to 15, but 100 can be added to 6. So, my first candidate will be 100 plus 6, that is 106. This 106 will be compared with this 15 to find out the maximum value, which is the maximum between these two. It's obviously 106. So, I am going to populate 106 over here. So, 106 is the maximum sum if I consider this sub problem such that no two elements in the array are adjacent. Now, I consider this sub problem which involves 10 also. We will follow the same method. 10 cannot be added to 106 because this particular sub problem contains a result which might not have used or might have used 100 which is the immediately previous integer. In this case, it has used 100. So 10 will be added to 15 and the candidate will be, one of the candidates will be 25. 25 will be compared with 106 to find out the maximum value. Which is the maximum value? 106 obviously. So I'm going to populate 106 over here. 25 gets eliminated. Now the final sub problem which also represents our problem. 7 is the new integer. Now this 7 will be added to 106. So I'm going to get 113 as one of the candidates. I have 106 as the second candidate which is the maximum between 106 and 113. It is 113. So 113 gets populated here and this becomes our answer. Alright, if we take a look at this particular problem array, logically we try to find out the solution. Then I am going to add this 6 to 100 because they are not adjacent and then the result to this 7. So I will get 113 as the answer. And this is the maximum sum of a subsequence such that no two integers of that subsequence in the array are adjacent. Now let's take a look at its algorithm. This is the algorithm to calculate dpi. dp is our solution array. We need to find out the maximum value between pbi plus dpi minus 2. pb represents our problem array and dpi minus 1. This is the expression that you can use in your program to get the solution of this problem. Obviously, you will have to take care of the base cases. So this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you learned from this video. Do hit the like button if you like this video. I want to know your views on this video in the comment section. I look so much forward to help you with programming and algorithms in only for this video. Goodbye and take good care of yourself. Thank you.